I am here with Reese McEwen. Reese, you definitely brought a crowd with you tonight. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, massively. Uh, I don't know specific numbers, but I know when my fight got announced, the tickets came out. We sold the section at the corner out in mm -hmm. like five minutes. So uh, I'm very grateful for the support. I could hear them as well, which is incredible. And you definitely made them proud. And listen, it was a tough first round. What was going through your head after that first round? What was your corner saying to you? So, obviously the fight was short notice. You was a, a jiu-jitsu black belt, but you, you don't know you don't know how legit it is because you don't have much footage. Uh, and when I shot the first takedown, he had that guillotine tight, and I thought, yeah, that black belt's probably legit. <laughs> um, and then obviously in between rounds, we had to change our style, like, like let's fight, like let, let's kickbox, like let's trust in your striking a wee bit more. And I think I made those adjustments. I got a takedown in the second round. I got another takedown after that. He got back up, and when he <coughs> obviously the guillotine came, I'm, I know I'm confident in guillotines, and also I felt he physically wasn't the same person in between rounds, so I knew I had that. Especially the way you were trapped by the cage like that, it definitely seemed like it was deep. So yeah, I, and I knew that obviously the defense is to roll over and, and make a scramble mm -hmm. with the fence being there. He couldn't do that, but it was more so a decision based on how I, I could feel he wasn't the same person. And I knew it's easy saying this now, but when I was in the submission attempts in the first round, I could feel him getting weaker. Mm -hmm. So it was almost like riding that round out um, and, and looking into the later rounds. Mm -hmm. But still not good. Not to, I don't like dropping rounds. So. Uh, that, that's not good. That can't happen again. Well, we like, like I said earlier, we do like a comeback, so it made it made the fans very happy. Yeah, exactly. To see that that's a, that's uh, in fighting. Do you know what? You can fight the best person in the world or the worst person in the world. You've got to be prepared to outwork your opponent, yes. no matter the level. Something like sometimes <laughs> all it takes is for one person, uh, one punch, one cre boy hits hard. Mm -hmm. So uh, all it takes is to get caught or whatever. And um, yeah, I just. <laughs> Face adversity head on. Mm -hmm. I always say that, so that's what I just done there. So, and during your fight camps, you've been spending some time at Short MMA. Yeah. Well, what, how has it been like, and who is your main sparring partner there? So training at Short MMA is obviously like it's incredible. You see guys like Jack Shaw, Brett Jones, who have been there, achieved everything that I want to achieve. Uh, to be on the same mats as them, it's just incredible. To be honest, but uh, the whole gym at Short MMA, they're they're incredible training partners. Like Jack and Brett as well. When you meet them. They're, they're incredible guys as well. Uh, always, off, always offering their help and support, and uh, like they're becoming like a home from a home from home. So, um, and main sparring partners. It's the whole gym, really. It's a, a, a genuine as a, a team effort, and going over there has made a, a big difference to my, my my current team. And I need to ask because not many fighters have bragging rights over defeating Kane and Lochran. I want to ask <laughs> what you thought about his last performance against Luke Shanks yeah, and like, if you feel he is ready maybe for a title fight. Yeah, like at the end of the day, right, I'm, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to say that why I should get title shots and why I should be above him. Um, but that's obviously my opinion. Um, if you ask me about Kane and Lochran, he beat Luke Shanks. I, I trained with Luke. He, he's, he's part of my team. Mm -hmm. um, looks a, a, a very good opponent and I said before it like, if he beats Luke Shanks that's a very good win mm -hmm. um, and I, I won't discredit any, I won't discredit the truth um, and at the end of the day when I beat Kane Logan it was an amateur I'm a better fighter now he's a better fighter now uh, if Cage Warriors give him the title fight uh, fair enough uh, if they want me to want to give me the title fight I'll take that with open arms if they want me to go and fight anyone out there who's uh, on social media trying to call me out then uh, I'll fight them too so at the end of the day like I'm focused on myself. I will get that Cage Warriors Bantam White belt. Whether it's the next fight, the fight after, the fight after that, I will achieve that and I will get that. Now, let me embarrass you just a little bit. I know right after the last the last fight you proposed. Yeah. Can you tell us how exactly you proposed? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I proposed in Italy on the Amalfi Coast on a, on a, a sunset boat. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a week, exactly a week after my last fight. So um, yeah, it was, it was a, Best day of my life. That'll go. That'll go down well. <laughs> but no, yeah, in Italy, in the Amalfi Coast. If you've never been to Italy, please go because it's an amazing country. Very good. All right, so thank you so much. <laughs>